<clears throat> Hello. Um, welcome to Wednesday Functional Fitness Class. Um, just let me check that the camera is at the right angle. Yeah, that's okay. Um, oh, I've got black marks on my screen. I need to clean it. Um, I've been thinking a lot about the um, bite-sized um, exercises. Um, and one of the ones that I've, I, I thought, because sometimes I find it, even with all my running and stuff, I'll go back here, even with all my running, I sometimes find it difficult to step up. Say I'm out walking and there's a style Sometimes find it difficult to sort of get up on the style. So one of the things you can do is use your stairs, if you have stairs. If you live in a bungalow, we'll discuss that in a minute. You can hold on. It's not particularly balancing, but if you want to practice your balance, that's fine. And just put your foot on the step and step up and go up on your toe and then down. And then switch legs up on your toe and down. So up, get, make sure that you're actually pushing with the leg that you're going up on. So it's pushing with that leg. And then the other one, pushing with that leg. Or you can do 10 on one side, 10 on the other, or alternate. If you're very ambitious, you can go on to the second step. The only thing with a step like this, up and up. When you're doing that on the stairs, you're not just stepping up. It's a forward movement as well with two steps. One step is okay. Um, you could, no, a chair's too high, really. Um, I'm not sure. If you, have, if you haven't got stairs, uh, hmm, maybe you've got a low, you could always buy a step, uh, you know, a step thing. They're not very expensive. Less than a tenner in decathlon, I would say. But that's really good because I, I do a lot of running, as you know. But a lot of my stuff is just like that. And so, so I've got a really steep front doorstep. And sometimes if I've got shopping, stepping up is quite, you know, it's like I get in and I'm like, oh, and then I've got to step up. So it's it's a good thing to practice. Um, I think we've gone through all the bite-sized ones. I've got a little list here. Uh, yeah, we've done squats, we've done, um, this is the wrong bit of paper, here it is, uh, yeah, we've done the ankles, we've done writing your name with your ankles, done squats, done granny steps, tiptoes, and, you know, granny steps, standing on one leg, that's what I'm going, uh, no, not today, sorry. Um, bicep curl, anchor your elbow. You can add a can if you want to do it. Or if you're very strong, you could have a two-pinter of milk or a four-pinter. Um, do that. One thing that I do, and I find this quite good, is those of you that have a bath, when the water is still in the bath, what I do sometimes is I put my arm, you've got to put your arms sort of behind you. Make sure you've got a good grip so you don't slip. But you're not going to stand up or anything. So if you slip, the floor might get wet, but it'll be okay. And just using your arms, just raise yourself very slightly. The water will help. So it's not as if you're raising yourself totally. But just, and that, that is really good for the, the backs of your arms there, your triceps, which is the one that we do this one. But if you can just get in the habit, just two or three times, just before you get out, just, I mean, if you're very ambitious, you can, you can do it on a sofa or a chair. I'll do this sideways so you can see what I'm doing. This is very ambitious, though. And you, if you keep your legs bent, it's easier. And just dip like that. The higher the object, so a chair this size, it's not actually that difficult. If you want to make it really difficult, straighten your legs. Oh, I'm going to be sore tomorrow. Um, but that's, yeah, so that's really good for your triceps. I don't want to include that in our exercises because I think it's, it's quite hardcore. But if you want to try it at home, keeping your, your knees bent. Um, I think that's all I've got to say now. It's... 11 o'clock. Um, 
M, 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 M. So we might as well get started. I'm just going to turn this around slightly. So that my table isn't in sight. So we've got a bit more space to work with. So we've had a couple, I've had a couple of people ask to join the U3A Keep Fit <coughs> um, group. So I don't know if we've got any new people here today. Uh, it'd be lovely if we did. I'm going to assume that we do. And so I'm just going to explain that the class will last about 45, 50 minutes and there'll be a warm up session. There'll be a main body of exercises and then there'll be stretching at the end. And um, so without further, further ado, we're going to start the warm up. We're just going to do it very slowly, just walking on the spot. I'm not walking on the spot. I'm going to go back to show you and on your toes if you can, just very gently. We're only at the beginning of the warm up. We don't want to go at it like a bull in a china shop. And just slightly exaggerate the swing of your arms, just to get your shoulders mobilized a little bit. Um, so this is just the very, very beginning. Um, what was I going to say? A lot of the exercises um, you can do in a chair. I'm going to assume that people don't need to sit down for most of them. But if you do, uh, let me know and I will, in, uh, if you're a regular, and I will include, um, I'll, I'll show you during the class how you can do it. Okay, I'm going to stop there. Next thing I want you to do is put your hands on your shoulders. You can keep doing this if you want. Combination exercise, arms straight up by your ears. If you can't get your arms up there, if you can only get them to there, absolutely fine. Just don't force anything. I find that people who haven't been actually doing this for quite a long time, it's not, it's not something you do every day, is it, raising your arms above your head, and you actually lose the ability. Your shoulders get a bit uh, rusty, so you need to get the fluid going. Down to there, out to the side, in, forward, back. Once more. And to the breach, dear friends, Henry V, forward, back, and last time, up, down, out, in, forward, back. Fantastic. Next, we're going to put your hand on your shoulder, make your arm like a wing, sticking out from your body at 90 degrees. Try not to have it there. Try and get it sort of in line with your body. Imagine you've got a pencil sticking out your elbow and you're going to do five big circles with that pencil. One, two, nice and slow. Three, four, full range of movement. Five, and then forward. One, two, three, four, five. And then the other side, don't forget the pencil. One, two, three, four, five, and then forward, one, two, three, four, five. Fabulous. Right. Um, next one we're going to do is just raising our arms and our, uh, our one arm goes up, the other arm goes back. <clears throat> Remember, don't rock. It's just your arms that move. So we're going to go nice and slow. One, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, eight, nine, ten. Fantastic. Right, we're going to start. We've got a little routine that we do. If you're new to this, just follow along. We're going to start by doing some heel digs, just digging your heel in like that. And at the same time, you're going to anchor your elbows into your waist. And you're going to do an opposite bicep curl. 
So it's right leg, left arm, left leg, right arm. I didn't think I'd be able to say that. It takes as much thinking and coordination to actually say it as it does to do it. Just keep checking that you actually are doing opposite arm and leg. And then three, two, one. It's going to move this out of the way. Oh, I should have explained about the chair and the band. I'll do that in a minute. Then we're going to just leg out to the side. And at the same time, prayer hands, push your arm out at the same, both arms out at the same time as your leg goes out. When you're doing this, try and make sure that your knee and your hips are both pointing forward like headlights. Okay. These exercises are good because they exercise more, or they warm up, these are warm-ups. They warm up more than one part of the body. Three, I'll tell you on the next one, two, one. Then we're just gonna take a step back. I know a lot of you have heard this before, so just close your ears and carry on with the exercise. But these exercises are mobilizing your joints, warming up your muscles, they're increasing your strength because you're standing on one leg and balance. So they're not just warm-ups, they're all sorts of things. Strength, balance, coordination, fabulous. Spread your arms, jazz hands, give your hands a bit of a workout. Three, two, one. And then finally, we're just going to do a toe tap at the same time as just swinging your arm, your opposite arm. Give it a little bit of an exaggerated swing so that your uh, shoulder is moving as well. You want to keep those shoulders as supple and as mobile as possible. Right, three two, one. All together now. Heel dig, side, back, toe tap. Heel dig, side, back, toe tap. Heel dig, side, back, toe tap. Two more times. Heel dig, side, back, toe tap. One more time. Heel dig, side, whoops, nearly forgot that. Back, toe tap. Fabulous. Right, we're going to do a little bit of ankle dexterity. So don't be very careful that you don't trip over your feet and fall when you do this. We're going to do a little bit of shadow walking. I'm going to put the uh, camera down so as you can see my feet and I'm going to turn this way. So this is the way that you're doing it. Yeah. So imagine there's a square in front of you and your feet are at the bottom right and the bottom left hand uh, um, corners of the square. And you're going to take your right foot and put it into the top right, uh, sorry, top left corner. <laughs> falling over here, I'm doing it so slowly. Take your left foot and put it over to the top right corner and then back. So you're going to go right, left, back, back, right, left, back, back, right, left, back, back, right, left, back, back. Be careful when you're putting your foot over that you don't do it too quickly and that you get all tangled up. Right, left, back, back. Twice more. Left, back, back, right, left, back, back. Right, this time we're going to do it with starting with the left foot. So the left foot goes up to the right corner, the right foot goes over, back, back. Left, right, back, back, left. Give a twist of your hips if you want. Left, right, back, back. Left, right, back, back. Left, right, back, back. Left, Right, back, back, left, right, back, back. Twice more, left, 
back. Last time, back. How was that? I'm conscious of the fact that maybe if you try to do it at my speed, it might, um, you might get tangled up. So that is definitely one to do at your own speed, really, um, because it, 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 it is a trip hazard, um, but it's good for you. Right, so are we all warmed up now? We've had given our, our muscles a bit of a bit of a going over. What I should have said is um, if you if you have a band, it's really good because you get more benefit out of the exercises that we're going to do. If you don't, just do the, the, the movements without the band, obviously. But if you can get, get a band, uh, that's great. Um, somewhere amongst all the, well, I don't know. It must be getting up for 100 now videos that I've got on this site. Somewhere there's a, a talk about equipment and bands and things um but i would have no idea what it is um and you need a, a dining room chair or a chair without arms it doesn't have to be a dining room chair just a chair without arms um these exercises you should be able to do most of them or you should be able to do all the exercises you might not be able to do we're going to do 10 repetitions of each so you might not be able to do 10 repetitions but that doesn't matter at all it gives you something to aim for um, if you could do them all easily, then you wouldn't have any need for this class. So probably the most difficult one to get the technique right of is the um, is the squat. Now, those of you that are, have been with me a long time, you can start squatting. But remember, a squat is sitting down without the chair. Some people do a squat and they immediately put their knees forward, but it's not. Your knees stay behind your toes. You don't have to go down very far. It takes a lot of strength on your calf, uh, your thighs and your glutes to do that. So if you can only go down to there, absolutely fine. If you can't do a free squat, use the chair. The object of this exercise, the way the squat is functional, is that you should be able to get out of any chair without having to use your arms to push yourself up. So sitting in the chair, hands in front of you so as you're not tempted to use them. And you stand up and then sit down again. Look how my bum sticks out. Just excuse me a minute. I'm expecting a delivery and I can hear them. I'm sorry about this. Hello. Hi. That's brilliant. Thanks. Bye. I'm really sorry about that. I, I'm expecting a delivery. Well, it's not for me. It's for someone else. And they were just phoning to confirm time. I'm really sorry. So those of you that are still squatting, you must be doing really well. Yes. So you're standing up and you're sitting down, not plonking down. You control it. If you can't do that, use your arms and use a bit of momentum. If you can't do that, as a last resort, use your hands. But... Aim eventually to be able to sit down. See how the see how the bottom when you sit down. Nobody really thinks about the mechanics of sitting down, but when you sit down, your bottom goes right out like that, and that's a squat. Um, so, when you're doing a free squat, try not to let your knees go in. So feet hip width apart, eyes, knees, um, hips forward like headlights. Eyes on your chest out that way, so as you can see what's going on. Hands here, here, here here, whatever you want to do, and we're going to do 10. Sorry, I feel it's a bit disjointed this morning because of that phone call. So we're going to go, I'm going to go down quite far. You don't have to. One, two, I'm going to turn sideways so as you can see what it looks like. Three, not very dignified, is it? Four, you ever watch a small child picking something up off the floor? Five, they don't bend their back, they squat right down to get it. Six, so you should practice picking things up like this. Seven, eight, nine, ten. Wonderful. If you can't do 10 straight off, do five or however many free squats. 
and then finish the rest off in the chair. It's absolutely fine. See, I used my hands when I sat down there. <gasps> Naughty. Right, seated row now. So you're sitting on the edge of your chair, uh, legs straight out, feet or toes pulled back. I'm going to put the band. If you haven't got a band, just do the arm movements that I'm going to show you in a moment. Put the band around your feet in the instep. Preferably so that it doesn't ping off and uh, hit you in the face. And you're having quite a bit of tension on the band, sitting up nice and straight, but quite a bit of tension on the band. I'm going to move my chair so as you can see what my arms are doing. But your, leg, your, your heels stay on the ground. Your legs stay straight and your heels stay on the ground. You've got the tension here and you're just pulling your arms back like this. Try and get your elbows to touch the back of the chair. Not going out like this or lifting. There's no lifting. It's just pulling back. If you don't have a band, just do these movements. And imagine you've got a penny, a penny, a pound between your shoulder blades. And you're trying to hold it there. And then forward. Remember, you're, it's only your arms that move. Two. This one you can do with quite a strong band because you're using both arms. Three. It's quite your muscles this way are quite strong because it's your back muscles that are pulling. Four. Some exercises you need weaker bands. Five, because your muscles aren't as strong that you're exercising aren't as strong. Six. Seven. Eight, nine, ten. Really good. With or without the band, really good. Right, we're next going to do a hip abduction. Ab means, well, away from, um, or from, away from the central bit of the body. Um, right, so this one, you can hold on because it's not a balancing one. We're going to strengthen the, the gluteus minimus and gluteus medius. The big one is the gluteus maximus, but you've got three gluteus muscles. Two little ones, you know, it's like, it's like daddy bear, mummy bear, and baby bear. So mummy bear and baby bear glutes. And this big muscle here, which is the TLF. TLF? TFL? Yeah, TFL. So don't try not to lean too much to the opposite direction. You're just going to lift your leg. If it was your arm, it would be going like this. Your foot is pointing forwards. You're just going to hold it there and then bring it back. Don't put your weight on it. Two. Your foot should just be floppy. Three. Four. When your leg's up there, just poke your butt. You can feel the muscles working and these ones. Five. Six. And it works your static leg as well because it's having to take all your weight. Seven. It's quite a hard one, this. If you can't go all the way up to ten, it doesn't matter. Uh, is that eight? Nine. Ten. Well done. As most of you will know, talking and counting is not my strong point. Right, other side. One. Two. Remember, it's just this leg that moves. Three. Four, five, six, seven. Oh, I'm falling over. Seven, eight, nine. 
10. Right, give your legs a bit of a shake because <clears throat> they had been doing quite a lot of work there, both legs, even though one leg's only one leg is moving, the other leg is having to take. Right, bicep curls. Get your band. If you don't have your band, just do the arm movements. I'm going to stand on the band, anchor your elbow into your waist, and then have a, enough tension on the band so that when your arm's there, you're having to consciously hold it. If you let, if you relaxed, it would go like that. So you want tension. Your muscle is under tension all the time. Not so much that you can't close your arm like this. It's not a lifting one. Your elbow stays exactly where it is. And you're just closing your arm like that. So we're going to go one, nice and slow and controlled, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight, nine, ten. Whoa. With any exercise, strengthening exercise, anchor your elbow. You start off thinking, yes, it's easy. But by the time you get to eight or nine, you should be thinking, oh, I'll be glad when this is over. One, two. Three, four, five, six, seven. It's just your forearm that moves. Eight, no rocking. Nine, ten. Fabulous. Going to have a quick look at the comment. <laughs> yeah, it, it does take longer to warm up as you get older, Prue, and also in the cold. It's not cold here again. It's gone from cold to drich in about an hour. Right. The next one is the one leg balance. What I'm going to do, because you know that I'm having a Christmas break and the last, the last uh, functional fitness class is on. Wednesday the 16th. So just to prepare you, we're going to do um, a test to see how long you can stand on one leg for, uh, up to 30 seconds. And I'm going to count out the 30 seconds and you have to notice when you either have to hold on or you have to put your foot down. And then over the Christmas break, we're going to see, we're going to sort of identify those good people that keep up with their exercises and those naughty people and see whether it, your balance has improved or deteriorated over the four weeks holiday that I'm going to have. <gasps> four weeks holiday, yay! So today what we're going to do is we're going to just stand on one leg, we're going to breathe out, <sighs> pull the navel into your backbone as hard as you can, pull up your pelvic floor, release the navel one a little bit, hands on hips, and we're going to put one leg up there, and then bring it up slightly more and then put it down. That's one. We're going to do 10 on each side. So try and get your thigh parallel with the floor if you can. If you can't, that's OK. And then raise it a little bit, even if it only goes a tiny bit up. You're just learning. You're just practicing movement and standing on one leg. Up. That's three. Up. Up. Woo! Four. Guess who fell over? Teacher fell over. Five. Up. Up. Six. Seven. Eight should always be controlled. Nine. Ten. 
10. Oh, 10, what am I doing? Sorry. I was so in the zone there. Just kept going. Give your legs a wiggle just to get them. You've been standing on this one. Okay, right. Breathe out. Pull your navel into your backbone. Hard as you can, release it slightly. Pull up your pelvic floor. Hands on hips if you want. Hovering above the chair if it needs to. And we're going to go onto the other leg. And then up a bit more. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. When you put your foot down, don't don't put your weight on it. Eight. If you can't do ten on each side, that's fine. Nine. I mean my leg, this leg gets very tired. Ten. Fabulous. Right, just give your legs a bit of a wiggle. Right. Oh. I'm going to put my chair sideways so as you can see what I'm doing. This next one, we're working the muscles here that go up your spine, your erector spinae, and your glutes. It's not a balancing one, so you can hold on. And you're just going to take one leg and just bring it back. Don't, don't bend it. It's not like that. Keep it as straight as you can. And we're just going to bring it back and hold it there. And if you poke your glutes and feel your back muscles, the ones that you can feel they're under tension when you do that. So we're going to do 10 on each side, standing up nice and straight. It's only your leg that moves. Don't be tempted to lean forward to mitigate your leg. So one. Again, standing on one leg with the other leg. There's a lot of standing on one leg, isn't there? Two. I suppose if you wanted, you could take your hands off. Three. Four. It's your thigh that needs to move back. Five. Six. Seven, eight, nine, ten. Give your legs another wiggle because this one is it's taking quite a lot of punishment, this standing on one leg thing, isn't it? Right, other side, other leg. So... One. Think about it as your thigh moving back rather than your whole leg. Two. Three. It won't be able to go up very far. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. Okay. Somebody else has put a comment. I just nosy. I just like to know what they're saying. Left leg definitely less strong than right. Yeah. 
Well, standing on it will help get it stronger, Nikki. I mean, that's the thing. If it if it's um, you know if it's a bit of a strain, it means you need to do it more. Right, we're going to do some ab work now. So sit sideways on the chair. Ah. Oh. Um, sit so that your feet comfortably are on the ground. So if you're taller, you can sit further back. If you're smaller, you have to move further forward. And remember, we're sitting up nice and straight with the middle finger just at the top of your kneecap. And then you're going to move back slightly so that your middle finger is only about an inch above your kneecap. Don't want you going right back because then you can start getting pain in the small of your back. Just back about an inch. And then we're going to just alternately lift legs. Two, we're going to do ten. Three. Four. Five. Six. I think I cocked up the counting at the beginning. Seven. I usually do. Eight. Nine. Ten. Sit forward. You should be able to feel it here. Or not be able to. That's where it should take its toll. Just relax a little bit. Give yourself a bit of a wiggle. Move forward if you want. Whatever, whatever feels good. And then we're going to do it again. So sitting back slightly, we're going to go one, two, three, four, five, I can feel it this time, six, seven, eight, Nine, ten. If you lean slightly further back, if you keep your back, if you keep your back straight, that's when you get the strain on your back. If you lean back so a bit more and then round your back, round your shoulders in like that, that actually makes your makes your uh, abs work a bit harder. We'll try that next week. New technique. Done that. Done that. Right. Triceps. This is the one where we have our hand over our shoulder and you're holding on to the, you're controlling the tension of the band with this arm behind you. And if your hand is over your shoulder like this, you need quite a lot of shoulder mobility to get this one right. If you've got impaired shoulder, because you're, you're going up to the ceiling, if you've got impaired shoulder mobility, have your hand mid chest and just point it towards the floor. It's the same muscle used. Okay, are we ready? We're going to do 10. So one, two, this is one where a lighter band you probably need three, because the tricep, four are not as strong as your back muscles. Five, six, seven, it's just your forearm again that moves. Nine, ten. That's a bit of a more tricky one, technically, I think. Unless you've got sort of, unless you can get your arm right back there, it tends to get caught up in, I've, I've seen people with it getting it caught up in their hair. It should be further back than that. If that's the case, try it from mid chest. And then next arm, other arm, one. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh. 
I don't like that exercise. Uh, well done if you manage 10 of those with good technique. Right, because they're so important, we're going to do another 10 squats. In the chair if you need to, free squats if you, if you can. Uh, so we're just going to go straight into them. We're going to go one, two, I'll turn sideways so as you see what I'm doing, three, four. I think a lot of people find squats difficult, five, because I say feet hit width apart and they do that. And that's really close together. Find it easier if they're even wider than hip width apart. Six. Seven. Eight. Whoa! <laughs> Nine. That's because my weight's on my heels, as it should be. Ten. Well done. Yes, because if you try it with your feet there, that's actually hip width. Well, your hips are a bit there. Try it there. I find that harder. I, I have mine slightly wider than hip width apart. It is easier. Right. Next one. Last one before we go into our routines is the wonderful side bend. So in this one, definitely have your feet wider than hip width apart. And we're just going to bend down to the side. If you want to put your hand over, make sure your hand, your arm is straight so that you're actually consciously using your muscles. And we're going to go over. Oh, <laughs> I always do grunting and groaning in this one. One. Well, it's not so bad today. Maybe I'm getting better. Two. After about eight months. Three. It's good news about the vaccine, isn't it? Four. Considering this started as a lockdown exercise class. Five. A long time ago. Six. Seven. Eight, nine, ten. Oof. Other side. <clears throat> oh, ho, ho, ho. One. Oh, ho, ho, ho. oh. Two. Does anybody else find the side bends horrendous? Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven, eight, nine, ten. Woo! Well done. So we're going to do our little routine. So we're going to do heel dig out back, toe tap, heel dig, side, back, toe tap, heel dig, side, back, toe tap. If you've got music, put it on. Heel dig, I can't use music because of copyright laws. So in a minute, after this one, we're going to speed it up and pretend there is music on. So, heel dig, side, 
back, toe tap, heel dig, side, back, toe tap, keep doing it, oh. heel dig, side, back, toe tap, heel dig, side, <laughs> back, toe tap, one more time, heel dig, side, back, toe tap, well done. Lastly, but not leastly, we're going to do, oh Sheila, I'm so glad that you're enjoying it. You're not here to have fun, my dear. Um, yes, the last bit is what I call heartbeat. And it's three bouts of 20 seconds of high intensity training. So, um, let me get my stopwatch. Clock. Right. And the, uh, the high intensity that I want you to do is to just running on the spot, tiny little steps, tiny, tiny little steps, really fast. Use your arms as well. Okay. Don't hunch your shoulders. Just as fast as you can. 20 seconds. If you've got any problems with your heart, if you're worried about doing it, just don't do it. If you're worried, if you think you can manage it, do it. If you want to do one and sit the other two out, fair enough. Whew, puff now. It's entirely up to you. So, are you ready? On your marks, get set, go. Seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Well done. How was that? Was that hard, easy? Well, if you're doing it properly, it never gets any easier, actually, because as you get fitter, you give it more welly. But you'll find it takes you less long to recover. And that, my dears, is a sign of fitness. Sheila's just said she's enjoying this. I bet I've just killed all enjoyment now. Right. I'll give you a few more seconds rest. <laughs> and then try to, try to avoid sitting down to rest if you can. What you should do is just walk, sort of, just do a little bit of walking around until your, your heart calms down. Because if you sit suddenly, it's not very good for you because your blood's been pounding. You suddenly sit. I don't know, that's what I've read. It's maybe not true. But you should always stand if you can, because it's better for your balance, it's better for your strength. Right, anyway. Second set. Second uh, set. Ready? On your marks, set, off you go. I'm just trusting that you're all doing this. I have no evidence that you do do it. You could be sitting down having a fag and a coffee for all I know. I trust you. 17, 18, 19, 20. See, that wasn't so bad, was it? 20 seconds is a long time when you're really exerting yourself, isn't it? I know when, um, when I did the London Marathon, uh, I jokingly said, because the marathon is 26 miles, 385 yards, and I jokingly said, that the 26 miles wouldn't be so bad. It would be the 385 yards at the end. And I didn't know how true that was because when you come into the mall, you know you're nearly there. And yet it just seems to go on forever. And then you can see the finish and, and the crowds and everything. And it just goes on forever. It just never ends. So 20 seconds is a long time when you're exerting yourself. And so is 385 yards. It's got easier over the weeks. Well, Nikki, that maybe means that you're not exerting yourself enough or you're getting used to it. I was joking about the not exerting yourself, Nikki. Right. Last one. On your marks, set, go.
17, 18, 19, 20. Yeah, uh, what, I, what I mean is I think when you first start, it's a bit of a shock to the system, isn't it, doing that high-intensity stuff. I'm just going to plug my phone in again. Uh, it's a bit of a shock to the system when you do the, uh, the high-intensity stuff, isn't it? Um, right, a couple of messages before we go on to the stretching. Don't run away. It's not time to put the kettle on yet. Um, if you've enjoyed the class, you can show your appreciation by buying me a coffee, as you probably know by now. The link is in the comments bit underneath the picture on the video thing. I, I find it incredibly hard to describe where that is. I don't know. And the other thing is just a reminder that the last class will be on the, I think it's the 16th of December. Gosh, we're in December already. I have a feeling I might have put November on the date of today's thing, the announcement. Uh, anyway, uh, yes, yeah, so the last one is on the 16th, and I think we're coming back on the 11th or 13th. Yes, we're coming back on the 13th, Wednesday the 13th of January. Um, so dates for your diary. Right, have you recovered? Let's go into the stretches. Get the chair. Look, sunshine. Um, so... Front leg bent, back leg straight, heels on the heel on the ground, both heels on the ground. Make sure both feet are pointing forwards. Lean forward. You should feel the stretch at the top of your calf. Obviously, the more you lean forward, the greater the stretch. But stretching should be challenging, but not not painful. Never painful. You don't want to ping anything. Never ever ever stretch when you're cold before exercise. Oh, sorry, bend your back knee slightly. Your heel will come off the ground and you'll feel your, if you put your weight, a little bit of weight on it, you should feel the stretch moving down into your Achilles tendon. Yeah, you see some exercise things where people start stretching before they've done anything. That's a recipe for disaster in my book. And obviously my book is a right book. Switch. Talking of which, I'm thinking of writing a book. Just a very simple 10... Ten basic exercises that will keep you fit. Bend your back knee slightly. Because even me, as a, as a seasoned professional, if I get a book about exercises, say I've got, I've got loads of exercise books, but say I get one, you know, strength exercises, and I look at them all and I think, oh, which one's best? And I think, oh, yeah, I like that one. Oh, no, I like that one. And I, sometimes thigh muscles now so remember do this this is like a story in installments isn't it um if you can if not you're doing the dynamic stretching just kicking your heels back yes yeah, so sometimes faced with a lot of choice i just don't do any of them and i think that that's the case with a lot of exercise books it's like she falling over getting excited now um, and so I had this idea that I was going to write a definitive exercise book with, say, 10 or 12 exercises, a bit like we do here, and say to people, um, change legs, but that's not what I'm going to say to people. Say to people, if you're doing dynamic stretching, <laughs> keep doing it. I'm not going to say that to them either. Um, yeah, and say to people, this is, a, this is a book if you just follow this slavishly. Don't use your own initiative. Just follow these exercises. Woo! And uh, see, I'm getting excited, not concentrating. I'm overbalancing. Um, yes, do these exercises and it will incorporate, the exercises will incorporate most of the, most of the large muscles in the body. You can't hit every single ex um, muscle. But these exercises will keep you stronger, they'll improve your balance, they'll improve your coordination, and they'll improve your quality of life. Anyway, that's what I was thinking of doing, writing a book. And I've got the, the introduction. It has to be on Amazon, probably, self-publishing on Amazon. Right, I'm going to do, uh, what's the word? Hamstrings. Yeah, self-publishing on Amazon. I'm just going to shut this door, it's glary now. So I've got the introduction written. Yeah, I've got the introduction written, but I've kind of stalled because basically I'm quite a lazy person. 
Right, sitting, knees at 90 degrees, ankles under your knees, sitting up nice and straight. One leg forward, straight, toe pulled back, sitting up nice and straight, lean forward from the hips, not the waist. Yes, yeah, so I don't know whether it's inertia that's stopping me or just fear of thinking, oh, I'll never get anything published. But I think it's quite a good idea because sometimes choice does bamboozle you. I think that's one of the reasons I don't like shopping. There's so much choice. Except for book shopping. I like book shopping. And then sit up and repeat on the other side, sitting up nice and straight. Lean forward from the hips. It's a very chatty, strengthening session, um, stretching session, isn't it? Oh, there we go. So, if any of you have got any contacts with publishers, ha ha ha. Right. Sitting. Yes. Stretching the hip flexors. I'm going to, yeah, we're going, I'm going to do dynamic stretching, I think. So standing up, holding on to the, make sure there's nothing behind you, holding on to the chair. You're just going to just swing your leg backwards and forwards. Don't move your torso. We're just going to do that for a little while, just to stretch these ones here. It's important to have strong hip flexors because that lifts your leg when you're doing that. But it's also important to have flexible hip flexors. Hip flexors are a series of muscles in your hip. Yeah, it's important to have flexible hip flexors. I'll stop that now so that you're not forward like this. If you're tight, you're forward like that. And that's a real old person stance. Other leg. Try and put it back rather than not out to the side like I did then. Standing up nice and straight. You have to pull your, pull your leg up. Don't, uh, don't swing it too fast or too, you're in control of the swing. Okay. And cease. And then we're going to have your hands, your arms at shoulder height, palms facing forwards, round the tree. You're hugging a tree. So it's like that rather than like that. Shoulder height and then dip your head. <coughs> oh, COVID. I like this stretch, it helps my neck. And then if you can, interlink your hands behind your back. If you can't interlink your hands, just try and get your elbows together, which of course you can't do, unless you're weird. If you're interlinking your hands, your fingers, just raise your, raise your arms like that, just to get that stretch across your chest. I'm gonna to have to look at these messages when they pop up, I'm just so nosy, I can't do it. Oh, Sheila, way to go. Book's a brilliant idea. Thank you, Prue. I kind of missed the, sh the, uh, the Christmas one, though, haven't I? And then, sorry, release that one. Hand up, palm facing back, put it down your back, so it's like that. If you've got shoulder mobility problems, just leave this one out, you'll be okay. And then just push it back slightly. We're just trying to stretch the triceps that you were working when you were doing this one or the ones that you were doing in the bath very gently without with the, the bath water to support you don't stand up just and then release that one and then down And then release that. Last three, just for your neck. Um, Sheila, is this your first class? Be 
it's funny if the, my, my television, my, my, my laptop did that, wouldn't it? Sitting down, just dip your head, look at the floor, put your hand on your crown, but don't push. Just let the weight of your hand push your head down. And then look up, turn your head to the left as far as it will go. Don't move your shoulders, just your head. And then put your hand, your right hand on your right hand side of your face. Try and turn your head to, back to the center, but resist with your hand so that you're creating tension in your neck. So your head's trying to move that way and your hand's pushing it back. And you're creating tension in your neck and then release it and see if you can turn your head <coughs> slightly more to the left. Just keep it there for a few seconds and then slowly bring it back to the center and then turn your head to the right. Put your hand on your left hand on your left hand side of your face. Try and turn your head back to the center. Resist with your hand. Get that tension in your neck and then turn your head slightly more to the right. Keep it there for a couple of seconds. And then bring it back to the centre. Fantastic. 57 minutes. Oh, that was an hour. It was over an hour. Um, yes, yeah, so... Um, oh, there you are. Um, yeah, if, you, if you're new and you haven't, you could subscribe to my YouTube channel. It doesn't, doesn't cost you anything. You just click. It's just like liking. Uh, you can like the class individually as well. Look at this. I'm going to have to get it cut. Now the hairdressers are open again. Woo! Um, but thank you very much for joining my Wednesday class. And I'll see you next Wednesday, unless you do the Monday class. And I'll see you on Monday. So, as Jimmy Young used to say, BFN. Bye for now. <laughs>